सो हाय एवरी वन टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द आई बॉल सो बिफोर आई गो इन टू द एक्जैक्ट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द आई बॉल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विल बी डिस्कसिंग द लेयर्स प्रेजेंट विद इन द आई बॉल द लेयर्स प्रेजेंट फॉर द आई बॉल एंड ऑल्सो द स्ट्रक्चर प्रेजेंट विद इन द आई बॉल विल बी डिस्कसिंग द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द आई बॉल इन टू कॉन्सेप्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विल बी डिस्क्राइबिंग द लेयर्स ऑफ द आई बॉल विच वी कॉल इट एज द आउटलाइन ऑफ द आई बॉल एंड नेक्स्ट विल बी डिस्कसिंग द स्ट्रक्चर प्रेजेंट विद इन द आई बॉल so first of all we'll go with the layers so there are actually three layers of the eye ball the outer layer the middle layer as well as the inner layer so first of all we'll go with the outer layer this part is called as the optic tract and this is the outer layer of the eye ball this outer layer of the eye ball is called as sclera sclera has two components this outer component and this is the anterior component this anterior component is in the convex shape this anterior component is in the convex shape and this part is called as the cornea and cornea is transparent in nature so this part is called as the cornea and moreover the cornea is transparent in nature actually it is a double layer sclera is double layer and each layer as i said there are three layers outer layer middle layer and inner layer of eye ball each layer has its own speciality and each layer has its own function so this is the outer layer again a just formal reveal this is the uh, sclera complete outer layer is called as the sclera sclera contains two components the anterior convex component which is transparent in nature this is called as the cornea and this posterior part from here starting all the way down till here this part is the non transparent part and finally this total sclera the total sclera is of protective function so we'll move on to the next layer that is a middle layer middle layer is highly vascular layer and sclera is not a vascular layer middle but the middle layer is highly vascular layer generally students confuse the middle layer they call it as choroid but actually middle layer in addition with the choroid there are two more structural components so we'll be discussing that so the middle layer is called as the highly vascular layer which i am drawing with the red here middle layer highly vascular layer this outer part which i have drawn now outer part of the middle layer this one is called as from here till here all the way here this is called as the choroid the choroid anteriorly continues as a thickening this thickening is generally in the form of a triangular shape so anteriorly this thickening is called as the ciliary body so this is the thickening which is in the uh, triangular shape so this anterior thickening is called as ciliary body the posterior part is called as the choroid choroid anteriorly it thickens to form a triangular shaped structure called as ciliary body from the ciliary body there are structures hanging down and they are going up these structures continue from the ciliary body so this is called as the iris so this completely is called as the highly vascular layer this red color thing which i have drawn completely it is a highly vascular layer which is also called as the middle layer of the eye ball so this is the outer layer of the eye ball and next this red color part is the middle layer of the eye ball middle layer of the eye ball is generally divided into three parts this posterior part is called as the choroid and this anteriorly the choroid 
forms a thickening or a bulging in the form of a triangular shape. This is called as the ciliary body. From the ciliary body, there are structures coming. These are called as the iris. So the space present between these two iris, upper one and the lower one, this space here, this which I am locating here, this space, this is called as the pupil. And one important thing I like to mention is that here there is location of you know this part is called as a lens so lens must be supported by some ligaments these ligaments are called as suspensory ligaments so they suspend the lens in a correct position so these are the suspensory ligaments which I am drawing with the blue part This is the suspensory ligament. One important thing I like to mention is that this blue color part which I have drawn is the suspensory ligament. This suspensory ligament, one side it is attached to the lens and the other side it is attached to the ciliary body. And that is the reason why the lens is kept in a uh, proper prospective, uh, uh, I mean proper prospective area in this correct location between the two iris. So we finish the second layer and we'll go on with the third layer. The third layer is called as the retina. This retina has an important function. As you know that retina is the main part which is responsible for the color vision. So the retina also contains double layered. So all these structures are double layered but they are not named the outer layer and inner layer separately. But retina is also double layered but it is named as separate layers. The outer layer is called as the pigmented layer and the inner layer is called as the retinal layer or also called light sensitive layer. So first of all I will go with the outer layer, the pigmented layer. So I will draw the pigmented layer with the green. So this outer layer which I have drawn with the green is called as the pigmented layer of the retina. This pigmented layer of the retina do not contain rods and cones. The another layer of the retina which is called as the retinal layer or the light sensitive layer only contains rods and cones. This pigmented layer do not contain rods and cones. So this is the outer layer of the retina which you have drawn with the green sketch which we also call it as pigmented layer. We move on to the next layer with the blue part. This is called as the retinal layer or also the light sensitive layer this is the light sensitive layer and as I said light sensitive layer it contains rods and cones so these discontinuous projections which I am doing is to represent the rods and cones so we finished all the three layers the outer layer is called as the sclera and sclera anteriorly has a convex part called as cornea and the function of sclera is the protective function the next layer second layer is this red color layer which I have drawn this completely it is the highly vascular layer highly vascular layer contains the posterior part called as the choroid this choroid anteriorly bulges as a thickening and this thickening is called as the ciliary body from the ciliary body there are structures passing forward or face to each other or opposite to each other these structures are called as iris so the space present between these two iris is called as the pupil and this is the lens lens is sus suspended by the suspensory ligaments suspensory ligaments one side it attaches to the ciliary body and the other side it attaches to the lens so this innermost part is called as the retina retina has two layers this green color outer layer is called as the pigmented layer which do not contain rods and cones and the inner blue color layer which I am showing with the discontinuous uh, lines here this, this represents the rods and cones and the inner layer is called as the light sensitive area that is the reason why inner layer is called as light sensitive area because of the presence of these rods and cones we can able to distinguish the colors during night time as well as during the day time and one important thing is that this green color pigmented layer it is not green pigment but I have just shown it so this green color layer which I have drawn it is called as a pigmented layer so this 
proceeds anteriorly, I mean forward, and covers the ciliary body. After covering the ciliary body, it passes behind the suspensory ligaments and comes out, and then it also covers half part of the iris in this way. Even the same here, the pigmented part continues forward, and then it covers the ciliary body, and next. it passes behind the suspensory ligaments and then it covers the part of iris but the retina do not continue forward along with the pigmented layer the retina stops here the place where the retina gets stopped there that place is called as ora serrata so i'll be labeling the names now so these are the structures present outside the eyeball so we'll go with the structures present inside the eyeball and then we'll label the names there are not much structures that are present inside the eyeball so you can see here that this is one chamber acting as one chamber and this part is acting as another chamber so this part is called as the anterior chamber and this entire part is called as the posterior chamber this entire part contains a fluid posterior chamber and this entire part is called as anterior chamber it also contains a fluid and this posterior part also contains a fluid the fluid that is present in the posterior part is called as the vitreous humor and the fluid that is present in the anterior part or the anterior chamber is called as the aqueous humor these are the two structures which are discussed with structures that are present within the eyeball so now we'll go with the labeling so this outermost layer as i said is clear clara anterior layer is a convex bulging which is transparent in nature as i said you this is called as cornea so this comprises the outer layer and next we'll go for the middle layer the middle layer has this posterior part called as choroid coroid anteriorly continues as this thickened bulging triangular thickening this part is called as ciliary body ciliary body continues forward as iris so we move on to the next layer the retina retina has an outer part called as pigmented layer of retina pigmented layer i have drawn in green just to represent the pigmented layer it does not mean that the pigmented layer is in green color and next this part is called as the retinal part or also called as the retinal layer which contain rods rods and cones so this part is called as the lens here and these two structures are called as the suspensory ligaments and next this part this part completely this is called as vitreous humor and this part called as aqueous humor so this is the structure of the eyeball
basic basic structure of the eyeball and one more part i forgot to mention is that as i said the point where the retina stops here this point okay and even here this point this is the point where retina stops but the pigmental layer continues forward this point is called as ora serrata so this is the layer structures of the eyeball thank you and the next video will be regarding the conducting system of the heart so how the pacemaker works and so on thank you